Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, October 12th, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our psalm for today is Psalm 90. Psalm 90, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our refuge in every generation. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from eternity to eternity, you are God. You return mankind to the dust, saying, Return, descendants of Adam. For in your sight a thousand years are like yesterday that passes by, like a few hours of the night. You end their lives, they sleep. They are like grass that grows in the morning. In the morning it sprouts and grows, by evening it withers and dries up. For we are consumed by your anger, we are terrified by your wrath. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days ebb away under your wrath, we end our years like a sigh. Our lives last 70 years, or if we are strong, 80 years. Even the best of them are struggle and sorrow. Indeed, they pass quickly, and we fly away. Who understands the power of your anger? Your wrath matches the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days carefully, so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. Lord, how long? Turn and have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your faithful love, so that we may shout with joy and be glad all our days. Make us rejoice for as many days as you have humbled us, for as many years as we have seen adversity. Let your work be seen by your servants and your splendor by their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be on us. Establish for us the work of our hands. Establish the work of our hands. In our reading from Deuteronomy chapter 11, today Moses encourages the people of Israel to remember and obey the Lord's word and to remember all that the Lord has done for them. Therefore, love the Lord your God and always keep his mandate and his statutes, ordinances and commands. Understand today that it is not your children who experienced or saw the discipline of the Lord your God, his greatness, strong hand, and outstretched arm, his signs and the works he did in Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and all his land, what he did to Egypt's army, its horses and chariots, when he made the water of the Red Sea flow over them as they pursued you, and he destroyed them completely, what he did to you in the wilderness until you reached this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the Reubenite, when in the middle of the whole camp, Israelite camp, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them, their households, their tents, and every living thing with them. Your own eyes have seen every great work the Lord has done. Keep every command I am giving you today so that you may have the strength to cross into and possess the land you are to inherit and so that you may live long in the land the Lord swore to your ancestors to give them and their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land you are entering to possess is not like the land of Egypt, from which you have come, where you sowed your seed and irrigated my hand as in a vegetable garden. But the land you are entering to possess is a land of mountains and valleys, watered by rain from the sky. It is a land the Lord your God cares for, he is always watching over it from the beginning to the end of the year. If you carefully obey my commands I am giving you today, to love the Lord your God and worship him with all your heart and all your soul, I will provide rain for your land in the proper time, the autumn and spring rains, and you will have heart and you will harvest your grain, new wine and fresh oil. I will provide grass in your fields for your livestock. You will eat and be satisfied. Be careful that you are not enticed to turn aside, serve, and bow and worship to other gods. 
When the Lord's anger, then the Lord's anger will burn against you. He will shut the sky and there will be no rain. The land will not yield its produce and you will perish quickly from the good land the Lord is giving you. Imprint these words of mine on your hearts and minds. Bind them as a sign on your hands and let them be a symbol on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your city gates, so that as long as the heavens are above the earth, your days and those of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. For if you carefully observe every one of these commands I am giving you to follow, to love the Lord your God, walk in all his ways, and remain faithful to him, the Lord will drive out all these nations before you, and you will drive out nations greater and stronger than you are. Every place the sole of your foot treads will be yours. Your territory will extend from the wilderness to Lebanon and from the Euphrates River to the Mediterranean Sea. No one will be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will put fear and dread of you in all the land where you set foot, as he has promised you. In our New Testament reading for today from Matthew chapter 12, we're going to see Jesus clashing with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law over the observance of the Sabbath. And he will demonstrate that he is indeed the Lord of the Sabbath. At that time, Jesus passed through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick and eat some heads of grain. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Haven't you read what David did when he and those who were with him were hungry? How he entered the house of God and they ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for him or for those with him to eat, but only for the priests? Or haven't you read in the law that on the Sabbath days, the priests in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. If you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Moving on from there, he entered their synagogue. There he saw a man who had a shriveled hand, and in order to accuse him, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He replied to them, who among you, if he had a sheep that fell into a pit on the Sabbath, wouldn't take hold of it and lift it out? Person is worth far more than a sheep. So it is lawful to do what is good on the Sabbath. Then he told the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out, and it was restored, as good as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted against him how they might kill him. Jesus was aware of this and withdrew. Large crowds followed him, and he healed them all. He warned them not to make him known, so that what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not argue or shout, and no one will hear his voice in the streets. He will not break a bruised reed, and he will not put out a smoldering wick until he has led justice to victory. The nations will put their hope in his name. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.